Today we will discuss the design of pie caps. Last time we discussed uh, the start and tie method of design and uh, we learned that uh, when you have a shear wall supported by uh, two piles, then uh, at the lowest level, we can use the start and tie method of design to uh, find the reinforcement requirement in the wall and especially whether the whether we need uh, tie reinforcement and if we need ties what is the quantity and in addition to that uh, we can also check whether there can be a failure in the concrete because we check the, uh, the stress in concrete within the area where the start occurs so that's what uh, we have seen last time and uh, another application of the start and tie method is in the pile caps. So generally, when you have pile caps, uh, when you are casting piles, uh, if you have uh, clay soils and if you are relying on the skin friction, then uh, generally it's necessary to uh, have a spacing for the piles of three times diameters, center to center. Whereas, you know, if you are relying only on the end bearing, you can go for something like two times diameters uh, as the space in between two adjacent piles. So when you have a pile cap, the idea is to uh, distribute the load almost equally among all the piles that are supporting the pile cap. So that is the idea. And uh, because of that reason, we can say the load carried by each pile is equal to n over number of piles. Uh, and also when you are having the pile cap, generally we Con consider that uh, a spacing of 150 millimeters will be left there. Uh, so the pile cap will be 150 millimeters uh, outside. The edge of the pile cap will be 150 millimeters outside the edge of the pile. And this is to ensure that, you know, the bottom reinforcement can be bent and anchored within the pile cap. So if we go into the details and, the, and an example, last time we looked at this particular example. <clears throat> so the distance between uh, two pi caps is given as S and S can be between two to three times the diameter of the pies. And we also uh, consider that when there are a group of piles, uh, you know, always there will be a distribution of forces. And uh, because we are relying on the start and tie method, it's important for us to know the, uh, the force induced in, in the tie. So this gives the forces that will be induced uh, within, the, uh, within the ties. So there are different arrangements for strut and tie and the force developed in the tie will be given by these simple equations. So today we'll, uh, okay, before that, before we go into an example, uh, it's also important that we check uh, the pile cap for shear failure. So there can be two types of shear failure. One is the direct shear failure the other one is the punch and shear failure. Generally, if you have selected the pile cap thickness as uh, 
एस एस हाफ द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू जेस एंड फाइव्स प्लस समथिंग लाइक थ्री हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर एक्स्ट्रा देन द चांसेस फॉर पंचिंग शीर फेलियर वुड बी वेरी रिमोट द रीजन इस if the piles are close then there will be enhancement of shear capacity and because of that reason the punch the 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 chances for punching shear is small but uh, if the piles are located more than 3 times diameters then you have to definitely check for punching shear and the other rule is if you are considering uh, the enhanced shear capacity uh, due to uh, the section being too close to the loaded face like this situation so here this is the loaded face of the column and this is the plane in which the shear failure can occur and we consider because the uh, pile is circular the the critical section will be at diameter divided by 5 the critical perimeter will be at diameter divided by 5 so it is not on the face of the column but it's inside the column and that is the critical perimeter for checking uh, for shear so let's look at an example using a strut and tie model determine the tension reinforcement required of a pile cap supporting a 500 mm square column carrying 2500 kN so you can see the axial load on the column is 2500 kN and to support this particular column uh, two two numbers of uh, two piles have been used the diameter of the pile is 600 mm and there are two 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 piles of 600 mm to carry the carry a load of uh, 2500 kg at ultimate rest and the size of the column is 500 by 500 because the pile size is 600 mm then the width of the pile cap will be uh, 600 plus 150 on either side so it is the arrangement like this so width of the pile cap will be the size of the column size of the pile plus 2 times 150 so it will give a uh, width of 900 mm for the pipe so now we can look at the arrangement the diameter of the pile is uh, 600 so here you get uh, 600 into 3 1800 and from here you get another 300 another 300 so the pile size is 600 so that will take us to 2.4 meters and once you keep 150 mm on either side it will take us to 2700 mm now you are familiar with strut and tie method of design and you can see we have a force of 2500 kN that will induce two compressive loads in the strut and to keep the equilibrium of the struts we need we need uh, a tie and the force in the tie also can be found so to find the force in the tie we need to draw this angle 
So we know the pi is at 1800 millimeters. So this is 900 millimeters. And we have selected the thickness of the pi cap to be 1400 millimeters. Uh, 1400 millimeters so the effective depth will be 1300 millimeters so that's the information we have so once you select the thickness of the pie cap on the basis that uh, it will be it should be bigger than half the distance between two pies half the half the distance between two pies so the two pies are 1800 millimeters apart three times the diameter of the, the piles. And then, so half of that is 900 millimeters. So 900 plus uh, 500 is 1400. So the equation uses uh, 900 plus some additional thickness and the additional thickness has been selected as 1400 millimeters. So you can see the angle of the strut is 34.7 and uh, out of these 2500 kilonewtons, half the load will be on this side, half the load will be on this side. So because of that reason, you will find that uh, the total force in the strut is 1520 kilonewtons. So when you know the force in this one, you can find the force in the tie as well. And the force in the tie is given by 1250 tan 34.7, or it can be written as 1250 divided by cos 34.7. And to get this one, this side, you have to get, again, uh, multiplied by Sine, uh, cosine 34.7, sorry, sine 34.7. So it becomes 2500, sorry, 1250, uh, sine 34.7 divided by cos 34.7. So you'll find uh, it's actually given by 1250 multiplied by tan 34.7, or the force will be 865 kilonewtons. So when you have a force of 865 kilonewtons, we have to provide reinforcement here. And the reinforcement requirement in the tie is uh, 865 multiplied by three divided by the strength of steel. So here you have to use the characteristic strength of steel, which is 0.87 times uh, 500 uh, with the factor of safety. So you find that, you know, you did 1,989 square millimeters of uh, reinforcement. And to satisfy this, we can have something like uh, two numbers of H25 bars and four numbers of H22 bars. The two numbers of H25 will give an area of uh, 980 and uh, four numbers of H20 bars will give an area of 314 into four. So altogether, we get 2,236 square millimeters, which is in excess of 1989 square millimeters that you need. So any question from this simple example? Any questions from this simple example? It's good if you can give some feedback. Could you understand that?
Idril, are you there? Chanaka, can you understand? Tamir? Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah okay. Right. It's good if you can give some feedback. So let's look at the second example, which is a case where we are having four pies. So the example is a group of four piles, supports a square column of 500 by 500 section. So it transmits ultimate axial load of 500 kilonewtons. So 450 millimeter piles have been selected that are spaced as 1,350 centers. and design the pile cap for 30 megapascal concrete with the reinforcing bars of 500 megapascal. So the arrangement selected is, uh, the pile size is 450. So the distance between two piles will be 450 to three, that is 1,350. And in addition to that, uh, the size of the pile is uh, 450, half of 450 is 225, plus 150, you will get uh, 375 millimeters, 375 millimeters. And it's a square column supported by a square pile cap uh, that in turn supports, uh, that in turn is supported by Four pipes. So if you look at the failure, first one is you know you get uh, you can use the strut and tie method of uh, uh, you can use strut and tie method. On the other hand, you can use uh, even the beam theory. But first we we'll look at uh, the use of strut and tie method. Is it too small for you? Is it clear now? So you can see the size of the, the arrangement. And uh, you can also see that the critical perimeter for shear is at a distance 290 millimeters from the face of the column. From the face of the column. So the first thing we can do is, we can uh, de determine the force in the tie. So if you look at uh, the situation, it is given by this. It is given by this. So two times L is 1350. So L is, uh, 675 millimeters. Simple L is 675 millimeters. And N is the total load acting on it. That is uh, 5,000 kilonewtons. And D is the effective depth. And we see what's the value we have selected. And here you can see uh, the pile, the distance between piles has been selected as 1,350 millimeters. Then the pile thickness of the pile cap has been selected as this divided by two. 
plus 300. So it's a good practice to use uh, the distance between pies plus 300 to 600 millimeters in a pie. 300 to 600 millimeters in a pie cap. So this gives uh, 975 millimeters for the, the thickness thickness of the pile cap and uh, then we'll see the overall depth of 1000 millimeter is used given an average effective depth of 875 millimeters. The reason for lower effective depth is that uh, when, you are, when you are terminating the piles, uh, we generally expect about 75 millimeters embedded within the pile cap. So when you're providing the bottom reinforcement, generally you have to provide the bottom reinforcement about the, about this uh, uh, pile extension of 75 millimeters. So because of that reason, you can get a effective depth around 900 millimeters. And in this particular case, we have used a value of 875 millimeters as the effective depth. So, So when you have all these details, we can, if you are using strut and tie method, the first step would be to select the, uh, select the, the tensile force that will act in the tie. And to find the tensile force, we have this equation in the lower 4D. I have just, I have explained it. Uh, a moment ago. So we'll have this force in a lower TD as the force in the tie. So the tension in the tie is 964 kilonewtons. And if you look at the area of the reinforcement required, then the area of the reinforcement is given by the tie force divided by the allowable stress and the stress that we can allow is uh, 0.87 times uh, 500 in uh, steel reinforcement. So because of that reason, uh, you get 2,216 square millimeters as the reinforcement requirement in the type. And then when you look at this particular force, With respect to this diagram, you can see, you know, the forces can act this way and as also act this way. And if you look at uh, this one, TAB is the tension that occurs between these two pipes, and uh, TCD is, is the other force. So when you take one particular direction, there are two forces or two places where the ties are acting. So if you look at the total reinforcement requirement will be two times what is given by this equation. So there are two ties this way, two ties this way. So basically you need uh, 4,432 square millimeters of reinforcement in each direction. And uh, when you have any of these values always in pi caps, you have to see whether we are satisfying the, the minimum reinforcement requirement. And uh, the minimum reinforcement uh, requirement is given as a function of FCTM and that is, a, that is an indication of the tensile uh, carrying capacity of uh, concrete. And uh, 
Here you can see FCTM value has been found as 2.9 megapascal. And these uh, values are given in Eurocode. Uh, there's a table giving values. And that is table. Uh, uh, if you look at table 3.1 of Eurocode, then you can find these values. The value is 2.9 megapascal. So basically what happens is we have to check whether we are satisfying the minimum reinforcement requirement, which is given by 0.226 times FCTM divided by uh, the strength of steel and the uh, cross-sectional area. So that gives a total area of uh, 2,756, which means the minimum rent reinforcement is less than the reinforcement that we are going to draw. So we need 4,132 square millimeters and the area of uh, 20 millimeter bar is 314 square millimeters. So We need 4,432 and divided by 314, we get an answer of 14.11, which means we have to use 15 numbers of 20 millimeter bars. And uh, the width of the pie cap is 2,100 millimeters. So we have to keep some space for the cover to the reinforcement. And there can be other additional reinforcement that we use around the pie cap. So, which means 2,100 minus about 150. So we get 1,950 divided by 15. So you'll find that the spacing uh, will be reduced to about uh, 130 millimeter squared. And with uh, 50 number of bars, we can provide this particular reinforcement at the bottom of the, uh, as the bottom mat in the pipe. And to calculate the value of shear, we need this, uh, shear capacity, we need this uh, reinforcement that we have provided. And 100 days of BD is 0.256 corresponding to uh, 15 number of 20 millimeter bars. And this is the extract from Eurocode that tells you the values to be used. And then there is another important consideration. And that is, you know, track controlling in the pie cap. And if you look at this particular column, because we generally uh, limit the width of the crack to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 times millimeters. And if you want, you can go even for up to 0.2 millimeter. So if you are using 16 and above, you have to limit the stress, the steel stress to uh, 240 megapascal. And uh, you can use a bar size up to 16 millimeter. On the other hand, if you are going for uh, something like uh, 20 or 25 millimeter bars, then the, then the bar size has to be, uh, to control the Track width to 0.3 millimeters. The bar size has to be limited to uh, 25 millimeter. And in this particular case, we are using 20 millimeter bars at a very low spacing of something like 140 millimeters. So you can say 
we are satisfying the condition for uh, track controlling and then there are two tables given in the in the euro code one is table 7.2 and also you get say table 7.3 And uh, according to table 7.3, uh, if you are having a steel stress of about 240 uh, new megapascal to control the control the the crack width to 0.3 millimeters, then the maximum spacing of bars should be limited to 200 millimeters. 200 millimeters so basically you can uh, look at these two tables and see whether the, the bar diameter and the stresses are okay and when you are calculating the stresses generally we consider uh, the full dead load and part of the uh, live load So let's uh, check the pie cap for shear and uh, when you are looking at the shear again you know you have to look at the critical perimeter and here you can see the critical perimeter comes here and uh, it is at a distance 290 millimeters away from the face of the column and uh, this particular distance is uh, the pile diameter divided by Five or twenty percent of the pile diameter. So the pile diameter is four hundred fifty millimeters. Four hundred fifty multiplied by 0.2 is equal to ninety millimeters. So here you get ninety millimeters and thousand three hundred fifty minus sorry thousand three hundred fifty divided by two minus 250 is 425 and then again deduct another 225 millimeters to allow for half the diameter of the pile so minus 225 gives you 200 millimeters so here you get a gap of 200 millimeters here you get a gap of 90 millimeters so altogether you get a gap of 290 millimeters so with that phase we have to see whether we are okay with the, the shear. So if you look at uh, this particular pile arrangement, there's a total load of 5,000 kilonewtons acting here. And out of that, 2,500 kilonewtons will cause shear on this side. Another 2,500 kilonewtons will cause the shear on this side. So the shear to be resisted will be equal to 2,500 kilonewtons. And we have to carefully find whether this uh, shear can be resisted by using the concrete section. So the critical section is 290 millimeters away from the face of the column. And we know when uh, when we have a shear failure plane close to the face of the column, then we can have the enhancement. So we have to look at the enhancement as well. But there's a particular rule in the Euro code that actually limits the enhancement. And first we look at that particular clause. So it says, for members with loads applied on the upper side within a distance 0.5D divided by AV divided, uh, sorry, 0.5D is less than AV less than 2D from the edge of the support. The contribution of this load to shear force VED may be multiplied by beta. Beta is equal to AV over 2D. This reduction may be applied for checking VRDC in expression. This is all 
Well, it provided the longitudinal reinforcement is fully anchored at the support. And for AV is less than 0.5 D, the value AV equal to 0.5 D should be used. So here you can see whether we are satisfying this, that particular requirement. Here we have a distance of 290 millimeters. And uh, then we have to see what is uh, 0 0.5, uh, 0.5 D. We have to see what is 0.5 D. 0.5 D is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 875. That gives a value of 137. So this uh, distance uh, that we have is uh, 290 millimeters. But 0.5 D is 437.5 millimeters. So because of that reason, uh, when you are substituting in the equation AV over 2D, what you have to substitute is uh, AV as 437, not 290. And 2 times D, 2 times 875, uh, multiplied by the total force. So the total shear is 2,500 kilonewtons. The total force is 5,000 kilonewtons. And half, the, half of that will be the shear that will cause uh, failure on one side. So the shear force is 2,500. And here what we do is, what we call as enhancement is actually we don't increase the shear capacity. What we do is we reduce the force. We reduce the force by that particular ratio. So here you can see, although we have a force of 2,500 kilonewtons, the one that will be available for causing shear failure will be equivalent to a load of 625 kilonewtons. So in some of the earlier examples, you have seen uh, the, the enhancement 2D over AV. But in this particular case, we are looking at in the other way, that is we are looking at AV over 2D. So what we do is rather than increasing the shear stress, we reduce the applied shear force, applied shear force. So we have to be a little careful there. We are reducing the applied shear force rather than increasing the shear strength. In the earlier codes, we used to increase the shear strength, but here what we do is we reduce the uh, shear force. Then we can calculate the, the shear capacity and we know shear capacity actually depends on the amount of reinforcement provided. And we are having 20 millimeter bars and the number of bars will be 15 in each direction. So because of that, the reinforcement ratio will be 0 0.0026. And you can see it's uh, much bigger than the minimum value. Minimum value is 0 0.0013. Minimum value is 0 0.0013. And here we, are provide, we have provided 0 0.0026. So we have provided double the minimum reinforcement and the, that is the requirement we anyway need. So based on that, we can calculate the shear capacity and when you are calculating the shear capacity, there are two rules. Uh, one rule is gives the minimum shear capacity. Other one gives the shear capacity based on the strength of uh, concrete and the reinforcement ratio. And uh, CRDC is a value given by this, 0.18 divided by 1.5. And K depends on the thickness of the the slab that we are considering, thickness of the member. And the reinforcement ratio is 0 0.0026. And based on that, we can work out the, the shear capacity of concrete. And here you can see the shear capacity of concrete is 0 0.35. And the corresponding shear force will be equal to 643 kilometers. And the 643 is greater than the shear force that we get after reductions, which means there's no chance for shear failure. There's no chance for shear failure. And at the same time, you can also see whether, what, whether 
this uh, minimum shear capacity is also satisfied. And you can see the minimum shear capacity which is given by this particular equation is equal to uh, 0.34, whereas uh, the value that we got here is 0.35. So which means the shear capacity will be adequate and there will not be a shear failure. So when you have the pile cap, in addition to the direct shear, we have to check the periphery of the pile cap for partial shear failure as well. So we have to check the periphery of the pile, uh, the column for punching shear failure. So this is the periphery of the column and we have to check that for punching shear failure. So let's see how to do that. And to do that check, we need to know this close 6.2.1. We have to check. And there's another rule which says the shear force we decalculated without reduction by beta should, however, always satisfy the condition, this particular condition. And this is the condition for crushing of concrete, crushing of concrete caused by shear. And to prevent that, uh, we have to use, uh, we have to ensure that the thickness of sufficient and on the perimeter of the column, the maximum shear stress does not exceed the uh, crushing strength of concrete, the corresponding crushing strength of concrete. And uh, the Maximum shear carrying capacity is given by this equation. And new value is given by this. BW2 is the cross section. And FCD is the strength of concrete, the design strength of concrete. So you can write this equation like this 0.5 times uh, 0.6. Point 0.6 times 1 minus FCK over 250. So here you can see 1 minus FC over 250. Multiplied by FCD. FCD is equal to FCK divided by 1.5. And the perimeter of the column multiplied by the depth. So you get the column size is 500 by 500. So perimeter length is 2000 millimeters. And uh, the thickness of the pile cap is 875 millimeters. So because of that reason, you'll find that the column will not have a punching shear failure up to 9,240 kilometers. And you can see the, our, the ultimate design force is only 5,000 kilometers. Whereas the, to cause crushing of concrete in shear, we need a force of 9,240 kilometers. So which means this column is safe with the uh, thickness of the pile cap that we have already selected. So that is the shear check. Now we, up to now, we have considered this strut and tie model but when you have a pile cap, you can always design the pile cap as a member subjected to flex as well. Member subjected to flex as well. So what you do is, we consider that What we do is we consider that there's a force here and there's a beam like this supported by two places. So you get a bending moment diagram. 
Wait, this is W, this is WLO4. So with this bending moment, again, you can decide the reinforcement that we had to provide at the bottom. So this way you can select the reinforcement that is needed to resist. the flexure that occurs in the pipe. I'll share the screen. So now you can see the bending moment is given by I think I have made a small mistake here because the the total load is 5000 kilonewtons. I have considered this as 2500 kilonewtons. So uh, I think uh, that is a mistake. So actually the bending moment that we get will be double of this amount. Mm. This one moment. WLO2 multiplied by just one moment. Mm. Five thousand kilonewtons. Five thousand five hundred multiplied by five thousand. Yes, that's right. Uh, Okay, I think uh, I have made a small mistake here because the the load is not 2,500 kilonewtons, it's 5,000 kilonewtons. So the bending moment is uh, given by WLO4 and L is 1.35, but this should be 5,000. So you get a load of uh, 1,600 uh, the you get a bending moment of 1,600 uh, 87, 1,687 kilonewton meters. And when you substitute that in this equation, the 1,687 and uh, MOBD squared, CK BD squared will be uh, 0 0.034 and when you substitute in this equation, you get uh, 
0.034 divided by 1.134 square root of mass plus 0.5. Uh, still, you get uh, the effective depth as 0.95 d. And then when you substitute in this equation, AS is equal to 1687 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 0.87 multiplied by 500 multiplied by 0.95 multiplied by uh, 875 we get 1687 to the power 6 divided by 0.87 divided by 500 divided by 0.95 divided by 875. So actually we'll end up with 4,665 square millimeters of uh, reinforcement, 4,665 square millimeters, 4,665 square millimeters, and Yes, we are actually getting the same reinforcement. So you'll end up with 4,665 square millimeters of as the reinforcement area. 4,665. 4,665 divided by 314, you'll end up with 14.85 bars. So again, you know, you'll need 15 numbers of H20 bars. So uh, all these uh, values should be multiplied by two because I have made a small mistake here. Uh, I, instead of uh, 5,000 uh, kilonewtons acting through the column, I have substituted 2,500. Because of that, uh, still, the, even if you substitute this one, the moment will be 1,686. And uh, still, the lever arm will be, Z will be 0.95 D. And when you substitute in this equation, you will get 4,665 4, square millimeters of reinforcement. And then you will find still you have to provide 15 numbers of H20 bars. So what you see is whether you use uh, bending theory or Stratton tie, uh, you will finally end up with similar answers. But sometimes, you know, you might find that, you know, bending theory actually gives much higher reinforcement amounts. So because of that reason, uh, most of the time we generally tend to use Stratton tie method, which is straightforward. But when you go for uh, large file caps, with uh, more than one column and uh, many piles, then you will find, you know, this strut and time method uh, may not be that uh, easy. And in such situations, we generally tend to use the bending formula and bending method. So we might be using this particular method when we, uh, when we have, when we do finite element modeling, we'll be using this particular method to find the reinforcement. Because so sometimes you'll find strut and tie uh, cannot be adopted, especially in the complicated uh, pile caps. So if you look at all these formulae, we have actually ignored the size of the column and the pile. But if you, are, if you consider the size of the column and the size of the column, then you can get a slightly modified equation. You can get slightly modified equation. So here the size of the column is considered. And then you can see that, you know, you get this equation. And if you say A0, and then you'll find this gives PL over 4D, PL over 4D. But here the L is equal to two times L. So once you substitute two times L for L, 
then you will find finally you will end up with the same answer as before so if you want to if you have a large column and if you want to consider size size effect of the column then you can use this formula instead of the earlier simple ones but if you have uh, if you do not want to be that accurate then you can simply ignore the size of the column and here the equations have been given for two two pi case three pi case four pi case and here you get five piles and in this case you get six piles so solutions have been given for all these cases where it is assumed that the pile uh, the pile cap will be rigid enough to ensure that the loads will be transferred almost equally onto all these piles the loads transferred onto the piles will be almost equal so on that basis only these equations have been derived so any questions you like to ask so i'm sorry about this particular mistake uh, because this should be 5000 uh, kilonewtons and this moment should be double so i'll make that correction in the note and upload the note again and here again the moment will be bigger lever arm will be the same but when you substitute you will end up with double the amount of reinforcement and that double the amount of reinforcement can be satisfied with 15 numbers of h20 mass any any question that you like to ask Prashant do you have any question no madhushank dasun samir do you have any question ashara any questions that you like to ask so you can see the important thing is you know you have to check for shear and uh, in uh, british code we did not have this particular restriction of four times uh, we did not have this particular restriction of uh, if av is less than 0.5d av should be taken as 0.5d that that particular restriction was not there and uh, so even the enhancement can could go up to the maximum shear carrying capacity of concrete so the enhancement could go up to this value enhancement could go up to this value but uh, in the euro code the enhancement is restricted to four times the shear carrying capacity of uh, concrete so that's the important thing you have to note here so if you don't have any questions uh, shall we take about uh, 10 minutes break and after that uh, we we'll start and i want to show you a uh, little bit of computer modeling and then uh, you know how we can model the superstructure and substructure together with pile foundations and also you know if you want to see the the, the behavior and the bending moment that can be induced due to lateral restraints that will act on the piles how we can uh, induce springs and find the the bending moment that will be acting on the pile as well so we'll do a little bit of computer modeling after the break and uh, i will start with a simple example but using a template so that you know most of the load cases and combinations will already will already will be available automatically because uh, it's already there whereas we'll uh, quickly create a model and see how we can actually look at uh, a pile foundation uh, which is acting together with the superstructure okay so shall i stop the lecture for 